Okay, I noticed something when I started putting this together. Uh, this is not seated all the way down. So I'm going to take my impact. So today, I think our next step after I clean this all up is to uh, put the races in. So let's see what it takes to do that. So the first thing, I went to Harbor Freight, bought this tool, the race inserter thingy. So, I'm guessing the next thing I need to do, I'll try to stay a little bit clean today, this is, today's going to be a little messy. Alright, step one, put the races in. So here I bought these Timken. Uh, SET2 race and bearing set. I'm guessing that goes in kind of like that. So let's start with this one. size do you suppose that is? Smaller than that? And it looks like that one will work. And boy they tighten that down to detail. Yeah. There we go. I'm kind of guessing, I've never done this before either, but uh, is just tap it straight down until it bottoms out. Maybe I need a little bit harder hammer. Let's go with this one. about the wind noise but the uh, 
fan. I got it on high because it's hot out today. A little bit more. Is it down? Then we put the glasses on. Look at it from underneath. It appears to be down the whole way around. Okay. So that race is in. Now we got to do the other one on the other side. And I don't know what size that's supposed to be, so... So we get out the other bearing, and that is a Timken set 5. Flip that over. Open this one up. I'll turn this down a notch. A little bit too much wind. There we go. Ah, all right. And here's the other bearing. And race. And that one goes in there. And let's see if it's this one. That one's... Okay, that's way too big. And this one has a little bit of slop, but it'll work, I guess. this one down. Gotta make sure it's going down straight. Looks like it's kind of going in a little crooked, but... A harder wax seems to take care of that. Okay. Hear it sound a little different. That means it must be seated. Take a look from the opposite side. Looks like it's down all the way around. All right. Next step, we have a seal, which is a Timken 6960, but we have to pack the bigger bearing and get it all greased up in there first. So, got some wheel bearing grease yesterday, and... I think we just take some glob of this, stick it in your hand, take your bearing and just keep pushing it through until it works its way the whole way through. And you start seeing that grease pack its way the, the whole way in there. And you just keep working it in until it's all the way in, the whole way through. All the way around. Every bit is packed in. And it's gooping out everywhere. Don't be afraid to go overboard with it. Because the one thing you don't want is no grease. 
that's why I'm wearing gloves today. But you see how when I'm packing it, it's squishing all the way through that bearing. Now I'm just following instructions from other people who've done this a million times on videos. Because this is, I gotta say, this is probably maybe the second time in my life I've ever packed a bearing. And the last time would have been probably 30 years ago, and I don't really remember doing it. But that bearing is packed full. Okay, now we also need to put a little grease on the inside of this thing. So we're just going to coat everything with a thin layer of grease. Since we cleaned out all the ancient grease yesterday, sure nothing's in there that can rust. Then we're going to flip it over to the other side and try to work a little bit in there too. All the way around. And then once we get that done, we need to pack the lower or the small bearing. So I'm gonna grab the small bearing and a little bit more grease. Probably not gonna need as much as I did with the big bearing, but uh, and just start packing it in there. don't need to spend all that money on one. If I only do this once every 30 years, I really don't need to buy a bearing packer tool, right? That would be kind of a waste of money. If I was doing it all day, every day, you know, or five times a week, maybe I'd do it a little different. But for the amount that I do it, it's easier and just as quick just to pack it. Put the bearing in there. That's pretty good. Flip it over to the other side. Actually, I probably shouldn't put this bearing in until I'm ready to reassemble. So I'm just going to flip this over because the next step is to put this bearing in and then put in the, what should I call it, the seal. All right, so I'm good and greased up here. Let's see if I can get some of this stuff off my hands. in there. All right. Yeah. Okay, next step. Seal the grease back up. Find my... I'm going to wipe my hands down a little bit got too much grease on it now, but that's to be expected when you hand pack it. Okay, now we dig out the new seal. And that thing needs to go in just like that. 
Now, from what I've been told, is that either I can go around and tap it really lightly, or I could take this and flip it over. So I'm going to try it. So I'm going to take this race setter, flip it over, and then tap the seal in. And I believe it's not going to take nearly as much effort. That's why you use the setter. A couple good wax, and look at that, it went straight in. Nice. Uh, how far does this have to go? Does it go all the way down, or just flat with this top here? I guess there's a little ridge in there, wasn't there? Let's take it and. Tap it down. There we go, there's a little edge. I hope that's in there far enough that that's supposed to hold the bearing in place. Maybe I need to go in all the way to where they touch each other. Okay, I think I need to call someone and ask them exactly how far to push that inner seal in. I'll be, uh, I'll be back in a minute. Once I get my gloves off. Yep, these are done. Okay, after phone a friend, the next step is to dry fit it. At least, uh, to put it together and see how it's, how it's working without necessarily, you know, putting it all together. So what I am going to do is, I guess I need to clean this up first, huh? It's pretty filthy. I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so what I need to do, I have that nut cleaned up and that washer cleaned up now. They're a lot better than they were. I need to try to dry fit this thing. So I'm going to set the bearing in here. And I'm going to feed this into being careful not to damage the seal. And then we're just going to set things in here and kind of work it in by rotating it. And then we're going to put the nut back on and the washer. And we're just going to see how she goes together. So far it's going pretty good because I did a fairly decent job cleaning that all up. And then, I was told to slowly tighten this while turning that with a pair of channel locks. And go tight. I'm going to back it off a little bit. It's still spinning hard. I thought this was supposed to spin fairly smoothly, but I suppose with a tire on it maybe? See, now I got a lot of play, and it's still spinning kind of hard. Okay. I 
Boy, that don't move at all. Alright, what do you think? I think that's probably seated on there. Doesn't seem to roll slightly like I thought it would though. I thought it would spin freely. But are we just working in more grease or something or just waiting for that grease to work its way around? Okay. That being said, I think it's time now to Maybe that seal wasn't quite spinning as freely as I had hoped. Let's try that again. Yeah, it's that seal on the back that's spinning a little hard or grabbing. So that'll probably work its way in eventually. Hopefully, but it definitely is setting itself all the way back there. Okay. All right, take the bearing out, take the nut out, pick the washer back up off the floor. And now it's time to put the hub back on. So I'll meet you guys back over at the bench. Okay, the next thing we got to do, I got five lug, lug bolts, I have my new drum, I have my spindle laying in here, and what am I doing wrong? This thing goes on the other side, doesn't it? Because it goes on the outside of this drum. So we're going to set the old drum on the bottom and use the new drum and kind of sandwich it between the two and then we're going to drive these in and I'm going to make a little hole in the bottom of each one of these make sure they're all lined up which they are not going there that one's going there that one's going to go in there that one's going to go in there and that one's going to go in there there's five lug nuts and now I just need to Seat them. So let me go grab a punch of some sort. Let's go with this one. And we're just going to drive these in here until they seat. They're in there. 
Did it hold together? Looks like it did. All right. And these definitely are not uh, sealed or whatever. So we're now going to, or uh, swaged, I guess they call it. So now we go back over to the truck and we put this thing all back together. So I'll meet you guys back over there. Okay, I noticed something when I started putting this together. Uh, this is not seated all the way down. So I'm going to take my impact and run down all of these nuts to where they are seating. Come on, get back on there. down yet? Not yet. I'm going to move this off of this old drum so it sits a little better. Boy, that's loud. You might want to use some hearing protection when that's when you're doing this. Looks like it's tight. Going to break these all off. Okay. Now those are tighter down to the uh, where they should have been. Very good. And just use the torque from the old lug nut. Okay. Now we're going to move over to the uh, back to the truck. Okay, let's set the drum on there. Well, hold on. Probably should clean out this drum, shouldn't I? Don't know what oil or whatever are on it, so I should probably take a little brake clean, which I have someplace. And just wipe that off, make sure it's clean before I put it on, because it ain't coming back off after I do that. Well, I'm glad I'm doing this because there's filth on there for sure. I think there's oils to keep the drum from rusting before you put it on. But now that I'm ready to put it on, it needs to be clean. 
Okay, much better. Okay, let's put this thing back on the drum, or on the hub. A little bit harder this time because I can't see as easily. All right, now I need the bearing. goes in right there. back on which goes on this way and the nut And that nut ain't even close to on there to where it needs to be. And the brake is off as far as it'll go. something I can use to rotate that around a little better. A little leverage. Not the hammer. not strong enough to move that but that's definitely not tight I don't believe all right let's just loosen it all the way up again what well, you're never supposed to do right because I can't even turn this wheel oh that is so damn tight I can't even turn it. There's no way in hell that should be that hard to turn. Okay, she's coming back apart. Because that ain't right. What did I screw up? Okay, I need to phone somebody again. Do not know why this is doing that. Okay, so talked it out. What I ended up figuring out is, is this uh, adjuster wheel was just a hair not all the way tight. So I'm thinking that I just needed to make a little bit more space because all these new parts are fitting very snug together. So, all right. Let's put this back together. Get back in there. All right. Get my wheel bearing, my outer bearing. I cleaned it up and repacked it since I was 
had a little bit uh, of in and out with this thing. And now we're just going to put it back in there. Oh, it turns a little bit easier, not perfect, but we're just going to put this back together. Everything might not be seated properly yet. So we're going to come in here and put our washer on, put our nut on. Try to center everything up. So we know that's too loose because everything wobbled. And I'm just going finger tight. Boy, that is very stiff. But until those brakes settle in, they are going to be a little out of whack. All right. So now, get these greasy gloves off, and let's see if we can rotate this thing. Oh boy. That is pretty tight. And all I did was go finger tight with that. I wonder if a few wax. Oh. All right. Well, what do you guys think? To make room for the nut or the cotter pin. Let's go get that. And we'll set that in there. I'm not feeling anything on the bearing. Oh. But boy, does it turn hard. Mm. All too new a stuff, maybe. The other thing he said was to hit the brakes once I get them all put in there. See if the adjustment, if they don't adjust themselves. Because it sure seems to be plenty tight right there. I mean, it all seems to be brake holding on to it. Because we, when we did it before, this thing spun, but not hard. Oh, is there something we can use to maybe put a little leverage on it, tire leverage? All right, I'm going to go look around a little bit, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. Okay, I put my leverage tool on there. It's not spinning really smooth, but it is getting better the more I turn it. Because look, at now I'm getting almost a full revolution. So I think I got it pretty well snugged up. So <laughs> I just needed enough torque to be able to get that to turn around. So take this off. And then I just need to turn the cotter pin. Let's double check this thing for looseness. See? Now it could almost go a little bit tighter, couldn't it? Because I'm feeling a little wiggle. So, take the pin out. And let's go one tighter. Is 
I need like an old reel. Uh, but I think, yeah, I just need to spin it around a few hundred times just to get everything to settle in a little better so that I can get that adjusted better. Oh, and I put on right hand lugs, so I'm going to put right hand lugs all the way around on this thing. Should I put one more on there? Snug those up just to see. Those brakes sure seem to be dragging. But it doesn't seem to be the wheel bearing at all. Okay, let's zip that tire off. Is there any wiggle? See, after I turned it a few times, I'm feeling a little bit more wiggle. All right, let's go a half turn this time. Oh my! That half turn might have been more than well. Let's put the wheel back on. I can't turn this, I went too far. Oh, okay. It's just settling in.
what is wiggling. Let's go around the side over here. Feels like that drum is wiggling just a little bit. Hey, I don't have to take that wheel off. What am I doing? Let's just pull that out. And go another eighth of a turn. Oh, it ain't going another eighth of a turn, maybe. Uh, uh, uh. There it goes. Put the pin in. Okay. I think I got it. That must that other wiggle might be something else. Ball joint maybe? Well, we'll worry about that when the time comes. Although this seems to be fairly snug. Maybe I'll just leave that dangle until I get them all done and get them all put in place. Well, the two front ones have this issue. The back ones just run right on the spindle and they kind of lock in with the key so they don't have to spin. Oh, there you go guys. That one's other than putting the cap back on, the hub cap here and the hub cap there I guess. I got this side fairly well done. Let me know if you think I put that on there too tight. <laughs> Talk to you guys later.